Welcome biologists and in this short video we're going to be discussing autosomal linkage. In previous videos we have looked at all those parts there in green so if you did want to know more about the sex linkage please refer back to that video. So autosomal linkage this is to do with um, chromosomes that are contain genes that are closely linked in terms of their position on the chromosomes. So as you can see on this particular chromosome here, I have genes A and B, and they're quite far apart. Their position on the gene, their loci, is quite far apart. So this means that during crossing over, which occurs in meiosis to produce the gametes, it means I'm more likely to get different combinations of A and B on my chromosomes. Whereas if I have genes that are more closely linked, for example, genes two and three on here, they're very close together on the chromosome. It means that they're less likely to be separated during crossing over in meiosis. Now, as a result of this, it means that these genes are more likely to be inherited together. Now, autosomal linkage, this is all to do with genes that are not sex chromosomes. So all your somatic chromosomes, the somatic is your body, body chromosomes, your body cells, body cells, chromosomes. OK, uh, now due to linkage, due to being more likely to inheriting these genes that are most or closely together on a chromosome, it means that you're less likely to get the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. Now, you're not expected to know all the different ratios that could come about through linkage, but you are expected to know that autosomal linkage can impact on the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio that you will be likely to see if you did a cross between two he double heterozygous parents. So um, that's it for linkage, autosomal linkage. In the next video, we're going to be going on to look at epistasis. So good luck with your exams. And remember, please don't include the words it, they, amount and size. Good luck.